Happy Saturday. I'm here and I have all of my makeup done except for I'm missing one thing. I don't have any blush on today. And the reason I save that for you is so I could teach you a technique called draping. So it, it always cracks me up when I see these, these um, new articles about makeup where they'll say this new technique strobing or this new technique dro um, draping. And uh, really these techniques have been around for a long time, but they get a new name, a new spin, and they become new again. So draping is, um, thanks Renee, hi everyone. So draping is a way of layering blushes so that you get a really pretty dimensional look, but it's not as heavy as contouring. It's, um, it's fairly easy to do. For those of you who grew up in the 80s, you may remember this technique. So here are some of my blushes. I wanna show you some ones that you can do, and I'll do a demonstration on my face. So here I have the number six blush and Alive. So with Limelight, all of our blushes come as separate, so they have magnetic bottoms, so you can either put them in a palette or you can pop them into a tray and use them that way. And so I'm gonna show you a couple combinations that are really pretty and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So number six and number one, Alive and Glowing, gives like a really nice, <clears throat> sorry, I need like a drink of water. I apologize. Um, then another one that's a little bit fun to do is blushing and alive. These two. I'm sorry, I really need a drink of water. I hope I don't have to <coughs> sign off and then come back. And then I'll show you a palette that I've used for a long time by Francois Nars. And that one is called Adoration. And you see it kind of has two blush colors. We have a brighter blush and then a softer diffuse blush so that you can get a nice effect with layering them. Whew. Okay, I'm feeling a little bit better. Sorry about my coughing attack. Good morning, Terry. So I'm going to take this color. <coughs> okay, if I have to come back, excuse me. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I like to use two different types of brush. One that's a little bit more dense like this, and then one that's a little bit more diffused. This is a blending brush. So for the color that's a little bit more intimidating, I usually go with a brush like this so that it puts it on in a more diffused way and it doesn't look as bold. And then, um, sorry, I'm just gonna go ahead and blot here. Sorry about that. Okay. So I'm gonna take this color here. This is actually an eyeshadow from the Lottie Dazzle palette. I'm gonna put a little bit on my brush like this and just kick off any excess on the back of my hand. And then around the center of the cheek is where I'm gonna place the first brighter color. And I like to place this one more in a kind of a circular motion, and that'll mimic the natural flush that we get when we're embarrassed or we're flush from working out or flush because we're happy. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of that color here, like that. And so the placement of oops, that first blush is really important. You want it in this kind of the center of the cheek, like this, to give kind of a sweet, flushed look, like that. And that's why I like this brush, because it just stipples it on, so it doesn't go too heavy. Thank you all of you for sticking with me through my coughing attack. <laughs> I was having a little bit of trouble. So that's the first effect. And then I'm gonna take my big fluffy brush and kind of blend it out in a circular fashion. So that color, you could do the first shade with something like Alive. You could do a bright color like Possible. Ooh. But today I was choosing something a little bit more playful and fun. I think I need to get just a quick sip of water. I'm just going to get some for my sink. Mm. Mm. Better. <laughs> That's the thing about live. You can get like a coughing attack while you're trying to teach something. So... Today is this bright pink, and I, I put it on the apples of my cheeks like this. Thanks, Marie. Thanks, Renee. I've been a little bit more of a hermit lately, and I haven't been on live, and you know, you're making me all feel good. <laughs> so that was the first step. Then the second step, I'm going to take this color called Glowing, and this is a really light shade. So um, it's it's very natural looking, and so this one I'm going to place on in more of like a um, almost like where you'd put your highlighter. So I'm going to take that here and go like this and just blend that in with the brighter shade. So the brighter shade kind of goes here in the apples of the cheek like a feverish type of glow and then you take the lighter shade 
and you blend it like this. See how pretty that is? No, I don't have any contour on my face. Oh, so draping is a technique that was um, invented and really became popular in the 70s and 80s. And there's a makeup artist called Way Bandy. And it was kind of anti-contouring. You know, um, contouring's been around for a long time. A lot of times they used it in black and white to create dimension in the face. But um, in the 70s and 80s, they really like color. They like to see bright shades. And so draping is coming back in again. You know, people kind of moved away from contouring. Then strobing was the rage. And now people are loving color on their cheeks. And for me, I've always loved this technique. And that's why I have this blush that I bought a couple years ago from NARS. I've always loved playing with those um, bright pink shades. And, you know, colors like this don't intimidate me. And it's all about where you place it. If you took a bright pink blush and you placed it down here really low, you would never want to put it in the hollows of your cheeks. You place a bright blush higher on the cheeks because that's where you'd naturally blush. And then you can layer it with two different shades and almost any two shades would work. You can even mix a pink and a coral. You can mix a color like this. This is really easy and versatile. And you just pop that on top of it. And then you blend out that brighter pink shade and in the 80s and the 1970s, they would often sell blushes like that. You know, it was very common to see two blushes sold together because you'd have one color for kind of contouring and one color for highlighting. But the trick with it is, like I was saying with draping, is you wouldn't want to take a color, um, a bright pink, and use that in the hollows of your cheeks. That would be very unnatural. Generally, when you use brighter blushes, you want to think about where you'd naturally blush, which is generally... Hi, oops, <laughs> higher on the cheeks like this. And that's always how I've done my blush because I'm very fair and I kind of like that look. And one thing is if you ever get carried away, if you use a beauty blender, you can always take it a little bit on top of it like this and just sheer out the blush. And that's even pretty for getting away with colors like reds and you know people can be really intim intimidated with using a bright blush but just taking a little bit of your beauty blender on top, it just quiets it a little bit, and it makes it look like it's coming from within instead of sitting on top of the skin. So it's a technique I really like. It makes your skin look really radiant and glowy. If you're watching now and you feel like sharing, I really appreciate it. Feel free to share this video. So that's that. I'm gonna actually, since I quieted it down again, I'm gonna add a little bit more just to give you another idea. So now I'm going to take this color called Burn. This is a bright red. And I'm just going to take a little bit of this. And that's why I use a brush that is more, um, it's not as dense. Because if you're using a color like red, you obviously don't want to put on with something really dense. You'll look clown-like. So I'm taking that. And let's pop a little bit off the back of my hand so I don't have any excess on. And again, it's just right here. See that? So it just gives you a more romantic flush, you know, kind of that, you know, it just reminds me of, you know, when you have your first kiss or you're in love and you are around your, the object of your affection and you just have that cute glow that you, you only get when you're truly in love or maybe pregnant. <laughs> so I, uh, and I just kind of pop it here and work that color in. And that's just a really different way of applying it. Thanks, Kendra. Yeah, this is a tribe that I, I really love. I'm glad it's in. And it's something I really enjoy teaching people about. And I, I like it so much more than doing that really carved out cheek. You know, you see that so much where you have that line of demarcation where they start their contour. They'll take it too low and it's just like this, this heavy line here and a heavy line there. And this is so much more youthful. I'm 36 years old. And I have a lot of clients who are in their 50s and 60s. And as women age, we lose volume to our face. And so what happens is we all want these skinny, tight bodies, and we try to diet, and we work over-exercise. And after a while, that takes a toll on your face because as you lose volume in your cheeks, everything looks hollowed out and sunken, and it makes us look very tired. So having more of a rounded cheek, something that's fresh like this, it gives you a really young youthful appearance and it's just really fresh especially when you think about summer and spring 
and we're outside, you don't want to have tons of layers of dark on your face because although that can be pretty in a photo shoot or can be really cute if you're um, in the evening like at a club and you're dancing, in daytime it's really unattractive because you can see all of those harsh lines and it's not cute. So this is a really easy blush technique. Don't be afraid of it. Like I said, try to choose a brush that isn't that dense for your brighter colors and just pop it. It's almost, if you look at the arch of your brow and the tail of your brow, hold the brush there and come straight down. So it's just like that is the good placement for knowing where the blush goes with those brighter colors. Just there, right there. And then you kind of pop that color on and it's also about two fingertips away from the nose. If you take a color that's really bright like that and you put it too close to your nose, instead of looking like you're flushed, it looks like you have rosacea or you have a rash or something. So you gotta be really careful with those red shades. Um, another tip I have for that is if you tend to have a lot of redness around your nose and closer to the um, sides of your face. And I'm sorry I'm so breathless. <laughs> I've been. I've just been like a little bit different since I've been pregnant. I've been a little bit more um, uh, nervous, so I'm usually not that nervous of a person, but <laughs> I'm just like, I need to get back on here and start doing these. But this color is a concealer, and this is in shade one. And shade one is more green. So one thing you can do too is you can take this type of brush with that green concealer and do it around the corner of your, corners of your nose and around here before you do the brush so that way your cheeks don't look really red and. Um, and that way you can pull off that blush because if your skin is really blotchy and red, you can't pull off this look. So this is a must have if you have a lot of natural redness in your skin. And then again, it's just, it's just um, if you overdo it, my favorite thing is just using um, a beauty blender and taking that blender full and just going through here and patting it in so you don't have too much. So I'm going to look through comments and see if anybody has any questions. Oh, thank you, Kendra. That was a very sweet compliment. Does anybody have questions about how to drape or if you need some custom color suggestions, I'm happy to make them. One of the easiest ones to pull off are these two colors. It's to take the number six and the number um, five. And then if you have the beauty box, what's really great about it is that you can, everything's magnetic and you can just organize your blushes that way. This is another must have if you're going to do this technique, is to have a really good translucent powder. And I'm just gonna check for questions. So you can take this translucent powder and use that just to take away any shine. It also helps minimize pores. And aside from using the beauty blender to kind of even out um, any redness on the cheek, this will work too. And because I was nervous, I was getting a little bit too glowy, sweating. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a little bit like that. And it just smooths everything out. And that's it. It's pretty easy. I'll show you some other color combinations in some future videos so you can learn more about draping and have fun with this, this technique. And it's just, it's neat to do something different. You know, instead of always doing the same predictable contour and highlight or doing tons of bronzer, there's so many ways to add dimension to your face and bring out your eye color. And that's another reason why I love this technique is by using shades like these pinks and reds, they really bring out the green in my eyes and they add color to my face. Where being fair, sometimes you have to be careful. If you do those shades and you're putting too much bronzer on and you're doing too much contour, instead of looking like you have dimension, you can have the appearance of looking really muddy and it's not cute. So that's about it. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to come back on later. For those of you who are curious about whether I'm having a boy or a girl, I found out yesterday, but I haven't shared anything yet because I wanted to make sure I talked to all my family first and tell my kids about it. But I'll come on live and tell you the story and we're very excited and I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for joining me.